Hey there, I'm Ranj. I'm not going to bore you with some lecture that you've probably already seen and find difficult to relate to questions when you try and solve them. I want to get right into the question and show you just what approach you need to take in order to solve it. I've been through loads of different types of exams and know just when the question is designed to trip you up. So I want to share this skill with you and show you just when the aviation authorities are trying to catch you out. I'm assuming you've had a few lessons in GenNav, so I won't start from scratch. I want you to understand the subject and not just rely on memorizing the banks because with the new 2020 syllabus, that's becoming increasingly risky. So enough of the chat, let's get into it. In a polo stereographic chart for the Northern Hemisphere, the true course of a straight line at a latitude of 60 degrees north and a longitude of 170 degrees west is 315 degrees. We need to calculate the true course of the straight line at a longitude of 145 degrees east. There are two ways I'm going to show you here on how to solve this problem. The first way is a lot quicker and requires you to remember the chart convergency formula and relate that to a polo stereographic chart. So I'm going to bring it up here now. This is the chart convergency formula for a Lambert's chart. And the way it changes for a polar stereographic chart is the fact that the sign of the parallel of origin is always equal to one on a polar stereographic chart. To show why this is the case, let's take a look at this diagram here. The circle and the line represent the Earth and the polar stereographic chart. Here we can see that they meet at the North Pole, which has a latitude of 90 degrees. It would be the same if they met at the South Pole, because that would also have a latitude of 90 degrees. These two positions where the Earth meet the chart is called the parallel of origin. And as sine 90 degrees equals 1, and both polo stereographic charts have this value, our chart convergency formula will turn to this, which simplifies to this. So they've thrown us the curveball here because they've told us a latitude of 60 degrees north. And if we were to use that as our parallel of origin, we would have got one of the wrong answers here. Our change of longitude here is 45 degrees. To get this, we add 10 degrees to 170 west to get to our anti-meridian. And then it's another 35 degrees from the anti-meridian to 145 degrees east. OK, I'm going to draw a diagram here, which shows how we're traveling to the northwest and we're in the northern hemisphere. So we can use the DIID diagram to help us. We circle the D, which means that our track is going to be decreasing. So what we do is we subtract the convergency from our track in order to get our true course. This means that the answer is A. Right, now before I show you the next method, I want you to tell me what sort of questions you find difficult to understand. Put the question or question reference down in the comments and I'll take a look. I only have the ATPL question bank right now. So if it's from another bank, just describe the problem to me. Now let me be the typical YouTuber and tell you to hit that like button, subscribe, click the bell notifications so you can be notified when the next videos of me going through hard questions like this will be released. Now let's take a look at the globe top down and actually draw a polo stereographic chart. So what we do here is draw a polo stereographic chart for the Northern Hemisphere. Going to mark the anti-meridian there. As a side note, I put the UK, US and Japan here. They're not the right size or in the right place in terms of their latitude. However, they are at the correct approximate longitudes, and that's what we care about with this chart. It also helps us to visualize the diagram a bit better. 170 degrees west, seeing that's where we start. True north will be this direction from there. And this angle here will be 10 degrees between 170 and 180. Okay, now we'll try to draw on our initial 315 degrees track. I've got this large angle here, 
and the course we're traveling in is this direction. We've got an angle here of 45 degrees because the angle around a circle has got to add up to 360 degrees, which is a sum of 315 and 45. Seeing that we want to work the true course at 145 degrees east, we put this line here and also mark the angle between 180 and 145, which is 35. The clockwise angle between true north and our direction of travel is going to be the angle that we want. If we take a look at this triangle here, we can use the fact that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So this angle here, the combined sum of the 10 and the 35 plus the 45 plus this angle must be 180 degrees. So if we do 180 minus those angles, we'll get this angle here. I've called this angle x, and x equals 90 degrees. And now, using the fact that angles in a straight line must equal 180 degrees, and we know that this is 90 degrees, we know that this one must also be 90 degrees, and using the same rule with this blue line here, we know that all of them must be 90 degrees. Seeing we've got three lots of that, the track will be 270 degrees. The same answer as calculated using the first method. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more things like this, please like and share the video with your buddies and the communities you are within. I want to spend more time doing things like this so I can release more videos and improve the quality of my content, but can only do that with your help. Thanks again and see you soon.